Hey everyone, today I have what is going to be the first in a series called my top five series. Today we are focusing on what the title says, foundation, concealers, and pressed powder. Also, if you happen to be watching this the day this goes live or the week this goes live, this is going live the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, there are a few little sales happening. I'm not gonna bore you with a rundown of all of them, but if you're interested in the ones that I am most excited about, for brands that I have talked about many, many times here on my channel, be sure to check what us YouTubers call the description box, but is in fact not a box and not called the description box. If you're watching on a mobile device, it's a little carrot pointing down next to the title. Tap that, you're gonna see all these links we're always talking about. If you're watching on a desktop, then it's just a bunch of words underneath and it, underneath the title, and it should say, show more or more, something to that effect. Same deal, click on that and there is that mysterious description box. Before I launch into my top fives of those categories, I should tell you what kind of skin we're dealing with here, because I can only speak from my experience. So, as of right now, November 2022, this is 49 year old skin, it is dry, it is sensitive, and it is reactive, meaning there are some weird reactions that happen when I put on different kinds of products that it doesn't like. Case in point, where is it? Not sure if it's visible on camera, but I tried something new, got a big old zit. Yay. So that is what we are dealing with. I should also point out I live in San Antonio, Texas, where most of the time it's really hot and a little more humid than most other places. So I ask a lot from my foundations in particular and concealers, and I'm the kind of girl, I put it on in the morning and I don't look at it again until I take it off at night. So it has to hold up all day long. All right, let's start with the foundations. We're gonna start with the least expensive and work our way up. Number one is a rather long name. It's the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Serum. It is a foundation, although they market it as a hybrid between skincare and makeup. That's why they're calling it a serum. That is marketing. It comes in 14 shades. I wear the lightest shade, shade one, which ranges from 0.5 to 2 on their whatever scale they're referring to. So one of the claims for this foundation is that you don't have to be as precise in picking your shade. One shade can cover quite a few shades, which is nice. I wear, like I said, the lightest shade in the winter and most of the year. And then when I fake tan, it's just the next shade up. So there's a lot of variation between the two shades. This will give you a natural radiant finish. It is supposed to be good for all skin types, but it is particularly good for sensitive skin. I can attest it's great for post-procedure skin as well. I had a series of laser treatments done earlier this year, and when I could start wearing makeup again, this was the one that I reached for that didn't irritate my skin at all, that still looked good over the texture as my skin was shedding, which sounds disgusting, it looked worse, but this, it was covered up very well by this. And I would say the coverage is light to medium, closer to the medium side. This has also been said to be a dupe for the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. It's been quite a few years since I wore that one. That's one of the foundations that made my skin react very badly with cystic acne. But I will say the finish is absolutely gorgeous. This one is a stunner. The only negative that I have to say about this is the delivery system isn't great. It is a dropper system and it can get really messy around the top of the bottle. The website actually says to wipe off the sides of the dropper on the inside of the bottle before you put it back in and that should help with the overflow. It's just one of those things. This is pretty pricey for a drugstore foundation. Next on the price range is the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation Pro. This one is $38. There are 25 shades, and I wear the shade 2 Ivory, shade 3 Wheat, if I have a fake tan going on. Shout out to Lisa J Makeup for it first introducing me and even giving me the idea of this foundation, and then to the makeup artist who did my makeup, her name is Olivia, for my Gigi New York shoot a few years ago. That's what she used on my face, and once I had it applied, I realized that Lisa J Makeup knew what she was talking about, and this is an outstanding foundation. So this has quite a few interesting attributes. It is said to have a built-in primer. So for those of you that prefer to use a primer first, it's not necessary. It has a unique silicone formula. It's not the same as all the other silicone-based formulas out there. You do have to shake it up really well, but because of that, it sits on the skin really beautifully. 
It is waterproof and transfer resistant. Depending on how you apply it, you can either wear it all the way sheer or build it up for total full coverage. So that flexibility is really nice in one bottle. It wears all day long. It has a natural, more satin finish, less glowy, less radiant. It's not completely matte though. It has a nice natural sheen to it. It is fragrance-free and oil-free, and it is said to last all day long. I can swear that, in fact, it does. The only negative I have to say about this is that it is a little bit harder to find, so I will link it to where I find it, which is on Amazon, but Amazon doesn't always have the full shade range. This also does not contain SPF, so if you wanna wear this on a day where you know you're gonna be around a lot of flash photography, say at a wedding or other special event, this is fantastic. I also like that it doesn't have SPF because we should not be relying on our makeup to give us SPF coverage. You need a separate product for that. This one is great on its own. I have also worn it combined with other foundations to give them a little more longevity and water resistance. So I'm really glad I have this in my arsenal. I do find that this is a thicker foundation and consistency, so I do prefer to apply this one with a damp beauty sponge. All the other foundations, I should have said, I always apply with a BK Beauty 106 brush. Without fail, that's my go-to foundation brush. Number three on the list at $40 is the Wander Beauty Nude Illusion Liquid Foundation. I wear mine in the shade Fair Light, which is a shade too warm, dark for me, but I don't mind. It really warms up my face and makes me look really healthy. This one is very long wearing. I should say that it comes in 12 shades and I wear the shade Fair Light. It is vegan. It is a natural radiant finish, but can also be used as a spot concealer. You'll see why in a moment. This one is more medium to full coverage. It is buildable, but it is a heavier coverage than the other two foundations that I've mentioned today. It does contain niacinamide, but I personally believe that your skincare should be your skincare and your makeup should be your makeup and you should not rely on one to do the other one's job, but I will put that out there. And it is a very travel friendly tube in that this is a squeezy tube. So the unique part about this one, it is a doe foot applicator, a rather big doe foot. But this is why you can use this as a spot concealer or you can take the bigger side and just swipe it on your face and then blend it in. Again, I prefer to use a brush for that. I like to talk about the positives, but I also like to bring up the negatives. And again, the only negative with this one, it does have a smaller shade range, but also when you pull the doe foot out, you have to get it past this little, almost like a shelf. And when you pull it out, sometimes it splatters out the product a little bit, little, little tiny droplets. So just be aware of that. Maybe don't point it at your clothing uh, when you open this bottle. Next, a fairly recent find. I think I started wearing this one this year. It is absolutely gorgeous. Probably my currently most worn. It's the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, $49, 36 shades. I wear it in the shade Yukon most of the year. Fake tan time, I wear it in the shade Fiji, I wanna say. This one is definitely more medium, but buildable coverage. It's a natural glowy foundation, lasts all day long. This is the one I reach for. This one has kind of replaced the Nude Illusion. I wanna say they're very similar in the way they look on the skin. This one is a little more heavier coverage and I like that this one is less coverage, but still buildable. So I only build it up where, where and if I need it. It is marketed as being really good for sensitive skin and acne prone skin. I can say that in my experience, that is absolutely true. And I do like that it has a pump. It's a messy pump, but it has a pump. That one also happens to be vegan if I hadn't mentioned that. Now my most expensive and over all the years, most worn foundation and what I'm wearing today, the La Mer Soft Fluid Long Wearing Foundation. This one does have SPF 20. It is currently $140. I keep buying it anyway. There are 27 shades. I wear mine in the shade 120 Ivory. This is weightless on your skin. It is a very lightweight, fluid, almost watery foundation. So don't let that freak you out when it comes out of the pump. This pump stays cleaner for some reason, as it should for $140. It is naturally radiant, hydrating, buildable, medium to not quite full coverage, but it is buildable. It can be sheared out though to very light coverage. So you do get a lot of flexibility with this one as well. It is long wearing and weirdly, in my experience, it improves on your skin the longer you wear it. So throughout the day, it actually starts looking even better than initial application. It's almost like it melds 
with your skin. They do say that it is sweat and humidity resistant, which I didn't know till looking up some of this information for this video, which I find fascinating. It would explain how it lasts all day long in 100 degree heat in San Antonio, Texas. So I know it's expensive. I'm not even going to try to justify it, but I will say this. I use this probably at least three days a week and one bottle will last me at least a full year. So it's like a magically replenishing bottle. It lasts a really, really long time. Let's quickly run through the concealers. I have five to share with you. Let me tell you what I'm looking for in a concealer. So for me, most of the time, my concealers are for one of two purposes and not both. If they are, I will let you know. So usually I need two different concealers, one for under my eye because I want it to be more hydrating and I want it to brighten and lighten under my eye, and then a different one for my face to cover blemishes and imperfections. I am fair-skinned, some would say extremely fair-skinned. I have a lot of contour and bronzer happening here. And so for me, one of the issues I find with under eye concealer is sometimes the brand doesn't make it light enough to actually be light enough to brighten. It's just the exact same color as my skin. So some of the more popular ones that other people talk about do not work for me personally because they don't make a shade light enough. So number one, current favorite, what I have on under my eyes today and actually all over my face on my blemishes as well, including this little friend here. And let's be real about what a concealer can do. A concealer can hide discoloration and other imperfections. It cannot hide texture and height. So can you still see it because it's taller than the rest of my face? Yes, you can, that's okay. Okay, so number one concealer that is a very new discovery for me, but you have heard me talk about it, is the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. It is $27 full size. There is a travel size that is $12. If you order it from the Tarte website, which I will link, I do have a 15% off discount code that just works year round. I don't know if you can stack it or not with other discounts, but give it a shot. So that'll at least give you 15% off. This one is hydrating. It is full coverage, comes in 30 shades. I wear the shade 13N, Fair Neutral. It is also vegan, if that's a thing that is important to you. This is a natural radiant finish. It is waterproof, which is handy in those sweaty humidity climates I'm generally in. They say it is good for all skin types and it happens to also have vitamin C and E. So I have really dry skin to begin with. Under my eyes is gonna be drier. This one works beautifully under my eyes. It brightens up just enough, but it also goes really well on top of my face anywhere I want it. And I like that it's creaseless and water and transfer resistant, so it just stays put wherever I put it on my face. Number two was the favorite until it got supplanted by this guy, but I still do love this. This is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape, not to be confused with the original Shape Tape formula. This is $31 in the full size and $14 in the travel size, 35 shades. In this, I am 12N Fair Neutral, and whatever Fair Neutral color in all their, all their products have slightly different ranges. This one is full coverage, 24 hour hydrating. This one is a little more hydrating, uh, but this also has more of a natural matte finish. This is natural radiant, just depends what you want. They say this one is better over the other shape tape for drier or more mature skin, I would have to agree. And this is waterproof and up to 12 hours crease proof. I have found that as long as you set a concealer with powder, it's always gonna be crease proof, so that is nice. The next one makes, oh, and I should say this one is only under my eyes. The next one makes me sad because it has been discontinued, but I'm still gonna share it because you might have it in a drawer somewhere and you've forgotten about it, and there's still a few places you can snatch it up, and I will list it if I can find one of those. It is the Clarins Instant Concealer. They have reformulated and renamed it, and the new one got horrible reviews, so I'm not even gonna try it. This is the old school one. I have it in the shade 01. And this one has a very specific purpose in my arsenal. This one I don't use when I'm putting on my makeup. This is the one I keep in my purse. And if something pops through during the day and I need to tap some concealer on top of my already set makeup, this blends beautifully. It's really sad that Clarence had to go and mess up a good thing. But if you happen to still have this one around, it's a good one. The other one that I really like to use only on my face for blemishes, although they've released finally a lighter than zero shade. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm talking about. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I have it in the shade 1N. I bought it in shade 0N. It still wasn't light enough for under my eyes. They have since released a double zero. I haven't tried it yet, but I like that this concealer comes in neutral, cool, and warm tones. So it goes with a variety of skin types, whether you wanna do it under your eyes, or I should say skin tones 
whether you want to do it under your eyes or on blemishes or whatever. But you could also, depending on the cool tones, pick a different darker shade to use as a contour if you really wanted to. I love this one. It's full coverage. It's a creamy concealer and it has a very natural skin-like finish. So it's really great for blemishes and imperfections. And then the last one for concealers is not really a concealer. It's more of an under eye brightener. I've talked about this a million times. I just showed it in a video a couple days ago. It's the Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift. You put this on before any other face makeup to brighten and correct those under eye dark circles, puffiness and bags, three shades, it is $46 and I wear shade one light beige. And if you buy anything I've ever recommended, buy this. All right, quickly, the powders. So this one is a specialty one and the newest one, it is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Brightening Flawless Pressed Powder. I only use this with a powder puff to set my under eyes. It brightens, sets, makes everything smooth and seamless. It's fantastic. And what's really nice is it's refillable. So you buy the compact ones and then you just buy the inserts. Comes in two shades, one light, one deeper. Obviously I wear the lighter one. The rest of these are all for setting the rest of my face. Even with dry skin, I always set my foundation complexion pro products, the liquids and creams before I move on to the powder products. And the one I use every single day is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Powder Foundation. I like a powder foundation to set my makeup. I just use a fluffier brush. I wear mine in the shade, what is this, Y? Whoops, 215. Obviously, I really love it. And I, I really like the compactness of it and I need to buy another one just so that I can keep it in my purse. The one that I actually keep in my purse is from Wander Beauty. It's the Wanderlust Powder Foundation. Again, I have it in the shade Fair Light. A little tip with powders. If you're fair skinned or even medium toned, I would say, I like one that's slightly warmer, slightly darker, like the next one up. It just adds a warmth and a healthiness to your face and it takes away sort of that ashiness look to it. So I have it in Fair Light and I like their delivery system. It comes with a little poof and it sits on its own little acrylic thing, not directly on top of the powder, which I really like. This is the one that lives in my purse. Another one I will reach for on a fairly regular basis is from Laura Geller. It's her Double Take Baked Powder Foundation. Again, in the shade Fair. I can use the poof, I have pa or pad, it's really more like a pad, and I have, but I do prefer to just leave this in my makeup drawer and use a fluffy powder brush to apply. And then the last powder and the last product we're gonna talk about today is again more of a specialty product for me. I keep this around for what I'm going to be on a Zoom call, a Skype call, an Instagram live where I'm gonna have lights on and the lights bouncing off my face and making me shiny because normally I would not reach for a true matte powder. I say that, but the Makeup Forever one is technically matte. And this is an oldie but a goodie from, I think it's like $3 at the drugstore. It's the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder Foundation. I just take a little setting brush, the Real Technique setting brush, and I like the shade 003 Natural, and I'll just go around my T-zone and even a little bit near my under eyes. It helps when you're gonna be under lights. So this one is nice to have. If you're oily skinned, this is probably amazing to have. So there you have it, the top five basic face products. Hopefully this will get you started. And if you needed a little guidance in getting your Black Friday week shopping started, I have a few things listed in the description box to help you along too. Let me know down in the comments, what do you wanna see next from top five? It doesn't have to be makeup, it could be clothing related too, or accessories. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Hope you're having a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.